It's the Mitch Walker Show with the doctor. If you're looking for a lot of happy talk and fluff, tune into the Disney Channel. And now, the man with a mind for statistics. Unfortunately, those statistics are usually odds on ponies in Vegas. Mitch, the Dr. Walker. Hey, 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 hey. February 26th. Man, this year is flying by. Welcome to the Mitch Walker Show. We have got a sweet show lined up tonight. But tell you what, before we jump into all that, let's get the business out of the way with our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, um, real quick, I want to get this out there. Uh, a lot of you who listen regularly have heard this man on the show three or four times. Uh, he's probably been on more than that. But uh, Larry Kaler, a former NASCAR tech man, um, director of competition down at Cotton Bowl Speedway, uh, longtime IMCA inspector. Um, Larry, just a few weeks back, was diagnosed with terminal cancer. And when they asked him if he wanted to know how long he had to live, he said, no. He said, I just want to enjoy the rest of my life without worrying about anything. Larry's not doing too well. And I know he's been working on his bucket list and getting some things taken care of. But if you would, please keep Larry Kaler in your prayers. Great guy, longtime friend and friend of the shows. And uh, I know it's, it's tough on him and his family as well. And all of his friends, wherever they may be, whether in Southern California, uh, where he was a longtime tech man at Ascot Park. When a NASCAR sanctioned Ascot um, tech man for the IMCA, just a very knowledgeable racer and all around nice guy. Going through some tough times down in Texas. So keep Mr. Kaler in your prayers, if you will, please. On tonight's show, we're going to have a young man, Mr. Tom Lowry, from Southern Raceway Park down in Florida. He's going to come on, and we're going to talk about some of the things they got going on down at Southern Raceway. And young lady who I teased everyone with a, a teaser about it last night, but uh, Jessica Coulter with uh, Stillo Helmets and Simpson Race Products, she's going to come on, and we're going to talk helmets and misinformation that some manufacturers have been providing to racers. Uh, you know, if you got a good product, you don't have to sucker anybody in and you don't have to, uh, get underhanded doing business. So we'll be talking about that and talking about some safety issues and safety things that, uh, uh, all racers need to be made aware of. Got a open practice coming up this weekend at North Georgia, uh, Friday night, and then the third, they're going to have the Ultimate Super Light Model Series come rolling into town, doing their thing, so it's going to be a, a busy week, don't know where I'm going to go, I may just load up and go fishing, but uh, we'll be covering racing somewhere throughout the day uh or throughout the weekend i um i have a a thing that i'm going to be doing a little bit later on tonight on a man who has been around racing for a long time mr raymond parks that's going to be our history lesson tonight so uh, you don't want to miss that but uh sit tight don't go nowhere we're going to step out take a quick commercial break and when we come back we're going to be talking about an upcoming movie and a couple of guests that we've got lined up for the next couple of weeks. So don't go nowhere. It's the Mitch Walker Show with your host, me, Mitch Walker. They call me the doctor. 
And you'll find me exclusively right here on the Performance Motorsports Network. Hi, I'm Danica Patrick. Watching my nieces grow, play, and learn is amazing, but not every child gets to be carefree. One in six kids in the U.S. are hungry. This breaks my heart, and it's something that Feeding America is working to change. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste and gives it to families in need. To help, visit feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Open road, here comes the Hefley family. you packed the smartphones, headphones, tablets, water snacks, coolers, sunscreen, bikes, skateboards, games, videos, sunglasses. There's no room for people in here. Just don't wimp out on the most important thing. Deep, Deep fried, fried butter, butter on, on a stick. stick. No, seatbelts. Whether it's a long haul or short trip. It's a win-win situation. Never give up until they buckle up. Visit safercar.gov slash kidsbuckleup for more information. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. You own a performance car and you know how to drive, but you want to learn real performance driving. Well, Bunky, get that car off the street and onto the track. Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier road racing facility, located just over an hour from D.C. in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, is the place to go. And you'll find that Friday at the track is going to give you what you need. For less than a monthly car payment, you can attend this regularly scheduled one-day instructional event in your street car on one of Summit Point's three world-class road racing circuits. You'll receive classroom instruction, skid pad instruction in their cars, including front and rear skid control and four 20-minute in-your-car instructional sessions from a professional instructor. Have fun, go fast, and really learn how to drive. Call 304-725-8444 for class schedules and details. That's 304-725-8444. Friday at the track at Summit Point Motorsports Park. How would you like to perform for one of the best car care centers in the nation? Lewis Meineke is now looking for skilled automotive technicians to join their award-winning team. Offering a highly competitive compensation plan with great benefits, a flexible schedule, and a signing bonus to the right candidate. Now, you must be ASE certified, and a minimum of six years' experience is preferred. Act fast. Don't miss out on this incredible, rare opportunity. Call Tim at 302-827-2054. It's the Mitch Walker Show. The name says it all. Now back to your host, the doctor. All right. Welcome back. One of the things that um, I'm really excited about doing this show is some of the people we get to meet. And there is a lot of people that normally I wouldn't have, I would have never got to meet if I hadn't been for this show. And one of them is our Keith Harris. Keith has been on tons of different movies um, as an actor, a writer, a producer. Um, he was in the movie Grand Prix. Uh, he was in June Bug, Big Fish, A Walk in the Woods, All Out War, um, Shots Fired, Sons of Our Fathers, the this, the list goes on and on, and he is doing a movie that is called Shifting Gears. We talked about this movie last year, about this same time of the year, and they were just getting into production and doing a lot of the racing scenes. It was filmed over at Cherokee Speedway over in Gaffney, South Carolina, and uh the premise of the story is uh, Tom Williamson is a manager at the local little quick mart, um, worked his way up, wound up being a regional manager, and uh, he gets passed over for a promotion. And uh, they want to relocate him out in the middle of nowhere. Well, then he finds out that his estranged dad that he hadn't talked to in years left him a gas station. So he goes back to his family home and going to take over the family business and come to find out they're in debt. So through a 
series of events. They wind up going racing to make up the money to save the family farm, so to speak. And that's what the movie is all about. It's called Shifting Gears. Um, it's got some awesome actors in it. It's got MC Ganey, who was in the Dukes of Hazard. He was in Con Air. Um, M. Emmett Walsh. Um, he was in the movie The Jerk, Blade Runner, Critters. John Ratzenberger, who was on Cheers. Uh, Wally, he was the voice of Mac in Cars. He was on Finding Nemo, um, lots of different uh, voiceovers. C. Thomas Howell, who was in E.T., Spider-Man, The Outsiders. All these are actors that are in that movie. And uh, it's going to be coming out March 23rd. Well, next week, we're working on getting uh, Mr. Harris on to tell us a little bit about it. And uh, just something that's racing related. And they went way out of their way to make sure that the racing footage that they shot in this movie is as close to accurate and realistic as they possibly can. And that's one of the things that attracted me to the movie. So um, we'll be talking with him. Also, uh, guest that I'm working on getting for next week is uh, Denny Edwards. We had Denny on a few weeks back or a few months back as he was getting ready to do the motorcycle jump. He is, um, on up in his seventies and he took a old triumph and jumped over two semis end to end and made it work. And we had him on talking about making what he was, the preparations in making the jump. And uh, I've been following and, and talking with him the past couple of months. And I'm going to get him back on to talk about what it felt like to do that. After not jumping for 32 years, I'm going to get him back on and talk a little bit about that. Also, another per th person that I've been working on getting... But this one, I got through Denny Edwards. His name's Sonny Nutter. I want to keep Sonny for a whole show. Because Sonny is nutty as a fruitcake. And I think me and Sonny will have a lot of fun. So, um, just a couple of guests that we've got coming up in the very near future. And uh, just kind of want to give you a heads up on it and let you know, you know what was going on and some of the things that we're working on. It's... Uh, I think it's it's fun to not just concentrate on just dirt track racing or just one form of racing, but to encircle and encapsulate motorsports in general. And that's one of the things that we're going to try to do this year. One other thing that um, I found interesting this past week was uh, they have made a big to-do about it, about we now have a minority owned Xfinity team. It is owned by a black woman and she is trying to make her way in Melissa Harville LeBron, the first black woman to own a NASCAR team. Um, once again, I have no problems whatsoever with anybody being an owner. I don't care if it's a purple people eater. Sheb Woolley can come in and own a NASCAR team. I'm not, I, I don't have a problem with that. What I have a problem with is why they got to make such a big deal about it. You know, I mean, NASCAR is looking for every little advantage, every little iota of, of fame that they can get to make themselves relevant again. And, you know, it's, it's not working. But uh, this young lady has uh, has worked hard to put her team together, and uh, we'll be talking about her a little bit later on. We're going to see how she does and see how the team does. She's been running a lot of the uh, late model races, messing around some in trucks and 
uh, we'll see how that works out. But it's uh, it just I, I just find it odd that NASCAR decides they want to promote this, you know, and push it. But uh, we'll we'll let them go. Also, we've got a young man. I'm ashamed of myself because I can't pronounce his last name, but he's got more letters in his last name than you have late models in a heat race. But he is the owner of Strictly Business, which is an offshore racing boat. They cleaned up at the awards banquets for last year. And they are looking to rev it up and go at it again this year. Uh, I've been talking with Mike Miskuff, uh, one of the team participants, and he has put us in touch with the owner and the driver. And we're going to be talking a little bit of race boats here coming up real soon. But see, that's the thing. We I want to I want to get everybody involved. I want to get everybody in all forms of racing some attention. You know, the little guy, the guy that don't normally get recognized. And it's it's a daunting task sometimes, but hey, I got big shoulders. I can handle it. Working on lots of things. That's just one of them. Um, you have to bear with me tonight. I have a bottle of announcer fuel sitting over here and I've been working on it. Got a scratch in my throat that feels like a piece of sandpaper, but, uh, we're going to, we're going to make it through. One thing I do want to touch on that a lot of people don't know. There is, let's see how we, how, how would you put this? There are some, um, history lessons, that's why we'll, we'll start with it that are going to, uh, we're going to be having some history lessons coming up this year. And we're going to bring you a unique side of NASCAR that NASCAR may not want to hear about, but they're legitimate parts of history. And Raymond Parks, who we're going to be doing a special on tonight, he's one of them. Well, there's actually quite a few of them. NASCAR won't tell you the history. And I believe in, in promoting the history of the sport. Uh, it's one of the reasons that I've become involved with Garhoffa, the Georgia Auto Racing Hall of Fame Association. We are going to push to get some of this history lessons out there so that everybody can learn a little bit more about upcoming history or about history in upcoming shows. I got my tongue wrapped around my eye tooth. I couldn't see what I was saying there. But it, it's, I feel it's important. And if we are going to succeed as a sport, then the more people that know the basis, the foundation of what got this sport to where it is, then the better off we are. And the more interesting it becomes. So, Stay tuned for some of our upcoming history lessons that we will be kicking off here real soon. I know that uh, we are excited to be bringing you this next guest. Uh, we're going to step out here in just a second and take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to be talking with the man who runs the show down at Southern Raceway down in Florida. Mr. Tom Lowry. So uh, run, get you something to drink real quick. Put those headphones on real tight and uh, turn it up. Because when we come back, we'll be talking with Mr. Lowry. And we'll be talking about what's going on down in the sunshine state of Florida down at Southern Raceway. So sit tight. Don't go nowhere. It's the Mitch Walker Show with your host, me, Mitch Walker. They call me the doctor, and you'll find me exclusively right here on the Performance Motorsports Network. 
You own a performance car, and you know how to drive, but you want to learn real performance driving. Well, Bunky, get that car off the street and onto the track. Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier road racing facility, located just over an hour from D.C. in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, is the place to go. And you'll find that Friday at the track is going to give you what you need. For less than a monthly car payment, you can attend this regularly scheduled one-day instructional event in your streetcar on one of Summit Point's three world-class road racing circuits. You'll receive classroom instruction, skid pad instruction in their cars, including front and rear skid control, and four 20-minute in-your-car instructional sessions from a professional instructor. Have fun, go fast, and really learn how to drive. Call 304-725-8444 for class schedules and details. That's 304-725-8444. Friday at the track at Summit Point Motorsports Park. Green light. Hey, girl. School zone. I'm getting hungry. Car changing lanes. You want to meet me for pizza? Stop sign. Intersection clear. Yeah, street. Pizza sounds good. Ball in street? Girl in street! (gasps) It's hard to concentrate on two things at once, like texting and driving. Stop the text. Stop the wrecks. How will you stop texting and driving? Tell us at stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Here's an important message from Rad and this station. Hi, this is Bob Sheehan from Blues Traveler for Rad, recording artists against drunk driving. I like to party just as much as the next guy, maybe even more. But the one thing I won't do after I've had a few is get in the car and drive. Don't blow it. Always choose a designated driver. Remember, music lives and so should you. Automotive technicians and auto service trainees, how would you like to work at the beach and perform for one of the best car care centers in the nation? Lewis Meineke is now looking for skilled automotive technicians to join their award-winning team. If you're a gearhead that knows his or her stuff or a young up-and-comer that has the motivation and drive to succeed, then you need to make this call today, 302-827-2054. Lewis Meineke Car Care Center, located in beautiful Lewis, Delaware, offers a highly competitive compensation plan, great benefits, a flexible schedule, and did we mention that you're going to be working at the beach? Plus, there's a signing bonus for the right candidates. Technicians must be ASE certified and have a minimum of six years' experience. Beginners advance at your own pace in one of several entry-level positions. But whatever you do, don't wait. These jobs will go fast. Call Tim at 302-827-2054. That's 302-827-2054. Lewis Meineke Car Care Center. Rev up your career. Results? We've got your results right here. It's the Mitch Walker Show. Now back to the doctor, exclusively on the Performance Motorsports Network. All right, welcome back, and thank you for tuning in. But let's jump right into this without any further ado. Joining me right now from down around the lovely bikini state of Florida, Mr. Tom Lowry. Tom, how are we doing tonight, buddy? Good, Mitch. Thank you for the call. Good to hear from you. Well, hey, you know, we we love helping uh, racers get a little more exposure, and best way to do that is grab a racetrack ever here and there. And I was talking with my, my good friend, LaVon Sparks, and uh, he said, y'all had a, a heck of a program going on down there at, at Southern Raceway. And I said, man, I want to hear about it. And he said, well, I can get him on your show. I said, make it happen. And presto, look here where you're at. Yes, sir, and I really appreciate the call. Well, tell us a little bit about what you got going on down there. Well, uh, I'm in my junior year, I guess you'd call it. It's been a third year of running the, the raceway down here, and of course, I always thought I could do it, do it bigger, better than anybody else. And to be perfectly honest, I think every racer needs to try to run a racetrack for just a little while to give them a whole new perspective. But we, but with that being said, we've turned things around really good down here. Uh, we brought in some great big shows. Had a fantastic show this last weekend with the USCS Sprint Cars. Twenty-seven uh, the first night, twenty-five the second night started to feature big, big show. Uh, had some some really big names in. Uh, we've got the Southern All Stars coming here in a couple of weeks. Uh, a week from this Saturday, we got the USAC Midgets coming down. Just trying to give the the fans a different look. And, you know, 
we're also in a great location for destination for drivers to come down. Well, you know, you know, down here in the Panhandle. I, go ahead. I'm sorry. You know, Tom. You know, you, you were talking about. You think every every racer should be a, should try his hand at promoting at some time or another. You know, it's funny because we've talked about this on the show. We had Levon on here a while back, and uh, we were talking about the 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 trials and tribulations of a promoter. And one of the things that that I remember from from my hand at it with Jason Jones at North Georgia Speedway a few years back was we were sitting there. We had we had hired all the the personnel we thought we needed. We had everybody in place, and uh, Jason's wife turned around and looked at us as well. How many hot dogs and hamburgers do we order? <laughs> and, and yes, you know, sir. it's little things like that, that that the average racer would never, ever think about. But try opening yes, a racetrack sir. and not have no food. <laughs> yes, sir. Or, or be in the middle of a show and run out of it. <laughs> it's not oh, yeah. Thing. Been there, done that, too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh yeah, it's it's uh it's it's it, I don't know I enjoy it when you when you have a fantastic show like we did Saturday, it it makes it, it, it you give have a really good feeling about it. It's just uh you know we we run Friday and Saturday this last show. It seemed like every little issue to come along did Friday, and I just I got woke up Saturday morning saying let's push through. We got to make the best of this, and everything come into play Saturday night, and it was fantastic show. It really was. We had a uh, good count down there. Uh, with his first car, Seth, Seth Bergman from Snoqualmish, Washington, had made the trip all the way to Florida to take this uh, checkered flag, and I thought that was pretty cool. And, uh, you know, because it ain't often a little local, uh, you know, a local dirt track like ourselves get somebody from 3,000 miles to come over here and take the, take the trophy home. You know that that's that's cool as frost right there. You know, and, and imagine how he felt. You know, he he drive all that way from Washington down to Florida, and go down there and go racing, and, and then come home and take a checkered flag. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It was it was pretty cool. We had a, you know a couple of top female sprint car drivers with us this weekend. Um, uh, uh, Haley White, Harley White, uh, she was with us. Uh, Morgan Turpin. And like I said, we had a fantastic show this last weekend. The track was awesome. Fan count was was really great. And like I said, coming up, we got some really cool things going on. And and it's all about what you do during the week. And I tell a lot of people this, and you you know what I'm saying. If you do your work during the week, on come Saturday night, things should go easy for a promoter. And all you got to do at that problem at that point is just put out problems as they come up. Yeah, and sometimes putting out little fires all around the place can be a full time job. Yes, sir. Now yes, sir. I know that that uh, you got a what is what is speed uh, Southern a three eighths mile, three eighths mile dirt oval. Um, it's been in operation. This is our thirtieth anniversary, and it's in a, a position a lot of tracks or very few can actually say from the time it was built and run. It's never closed due to management or any reason. It's never closed. It's run consistently for thirty years, and a lot of it's got to do with location. Of course, I didn't have anything to do with that. And, you know, the, the previous owners have, but it's been passed along over four different owners over 30 years. And, you know, and most of the time they try to pick somebody that's don't make the best of it. So, and, uh, we, we feel like we're doing good. The previous owners, as a lot of promoters do, they get, they get burnt out and don't, they don't have bad intentions. They just, the status quo is good enough. And anyway, we're just trying to bring in bigger shows, doing, doing a lot of bigger things and, bring some good entertainment to our local area. Well, you know, I, Tom, I think that's one of the things that, that makes a good promoter is one who's willing to think outside the box. And, you know, like you said, they, they, they fall into that rut of status quo of, of well, we do, it worked last year. Let's do it again this year. And that, that has worked for many, many, many years. But in today's society where everything is, is so, Everybody wants instant gratification. They want everything constantly going quick, 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 quick. It, it presents a challenge to a, to a promoter to be able to put on a show like that, don't it? Yes, sir. Absolutely. It's um, and you know I I think one of the things that's missing with our track and some other tracks is some of the stuff that we used to do in old you know they used to do in old days the stunt guys that come out and jump over buses 
and those things, you know, to entertain crowds, uh, you know, in addition to racing. And a lot of times, you know, I try to explain to people on a case by case basis, these things for insurance reasons or various reasons aren't around for us to choose from anymore. So we have to be creative in what we do to get fans to come. Well, you know, there was a, a couple of years ago, there was a, uh, I don't remember his name off the top of my head, but he, he, he jumps motorcycles and he wanted to come into this area and he wanted to jump at North Georgia. And we talked to him and, you know, was dealing with pricing and what have you and uh, got in there and got to looking at the insurance and the insurance to have him come in and jump one time was more than what he wanted to show up. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and you know, uh, that's that that's something else that, you know, a lot of people don't understand. They think, oh, well, just bring in so-and-so or bring in this or bring in that. You know, there's a lot of little details that goes into to putting something like that together, like to bring in sprint cars. Okay, you bring in sprint cars, that's a different fuel than you normally run. That's methanol. And when you, when you run methanol, you have to fight fires differently than you do with regular just racing gas. And it's, it's yes. little challenges like that, that that can can get to be a, a serious pain for a promoter. Yes, sir, it is. And, uh, and, and those little challenges, you know, if you plan ahead and think through things, you know, you can, you can you know, mitigate most of those problems before they come up. But uh, I tell you what, the surprises on, on race night are just never ending. You know, it's just it's always, uh, always something I could go on for hours about some of the little things that happen. And uh, there was a gentleman the other night lost at the racetrack, 96 years old, was there with family. And, you know, who would think such a thing would happen to racetrack? But, you know, there again, we found him. I got to meet him. We had his name. We gently called for his family, and they come and got him, of course. But it's a lot of little things that go on behind the scenes people never see. Oh, yeah. You know, I went to uh, Ascot Park years ago, the first time I'd ever went to Ascot. And I'd sit in the stands and watch sprint car race. And Ascot used to open the gates at the flag stand after the night's racing was over and let all the fans go down in the in the grants in the pits and talk and meet their drivers. Well, I, old boy from Georgia, you know, I, hey, I got to go down there and see these things. And went down there and wandered around for like two hours. And I'm like, where's the gate? How do I get out of this place? <laughs> and yeah. You get in a place you're not familiar with, it's easy to get lost. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we had, and, and there again, talking about the gates, Tony Stewart was uh, here this weekend. You know, his team was racing in Atlanta. And he came down to run with us Friday and Saturday. And very gracious, and I felt so sorry for, for, for him in a way. And I was, I'm glad, and, and, and the fans is what makes us living. But our local area down here don't see many big names. And they lined up 100 deep after the race, and they started lining up at the pit gate before the last feature. There was 30 right. people lined up waiting to go in and see them. And and some of those guys, it's amazing how much time they spend with the fans, you know. And, I, I, gosh, I know it was their hour, hour and a half. And that's, you know, you know, time that he took to spend with the fans. And I wanted to put that out there because I thought he was very gracious this weekend. You know, there, there's, you have some drivers who will stand there, and Richard Petty was one of them. Uh, they will stand there and sign autographs until the last fan gets their autograph. And Tony Stewart's yes. one of them. Uh, I've met a few of them that are that way. Uh, the Dillon boys, Austin and Ty both, they are that way. And it's it's... When when they when a driver understands that the fans is what puts bread on his table, when when that driver understands that, it creates a bond because they know that I can shake this fan's hand and they're going to remember that for the next twenty years. I met I met Tony Stewart down at Southern Speedway. You know, I'm, I, I met mm-hmm. Bobby Allison when I was five years old at Boyd Speedway, the track where I announce now. And that was 50, it was, it was a long time ago. I won't say how many years ago. It was a long time ago, but 
uh, I still remember that to this day like it was yesterday. Getting to meet somebody famous, somebody that you watch race on TV or you read about them in magazines or nowadays it's on the Internet. And when you can actually get to stand next to them and, and get your picture taken with them, it becomes special. You know, I mean, look at LeVon. LeVon Sparks, love him to death. He's, he's, a, he's a good friend of the show's. He posted a picture of him and Tony Stewart. And, he, man, he, he looked so excited he had his eyes closed. <laughs> that's cool. I didn't know he had done that. I'm glad you told me that. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, you got to yeah. watch he LeVon. Was, he, <laughs> he, you know, it's about a three-and-a-half-hour drive for him to come down, and I was really glad to have him. He came down. Billy come down. Uh the announcer come down, Mike. They all they all come down this weekend and hung out with us, and it was really good. They was, and they actually helped us out a couple of times with some stuff. I was glad they came. Well, you know, Levon, he is he's passionate about racing. He loves it, and he does what he can to uh, promote the sport. And he came up to Boyd's for our cabin fever race that we had here just a few weeks ago. He came up. And, and drove all the way up from down there where he lives in South Georgia all the way to North Georgia to come up there to help us out and uh, wound up getting rained out. But um, Billy is the announcer. He come up and sat in the booth with me, and uh, LaVon come up and was going to work as race director and, and help us out. You know, And when you, when you have people like that who's willing to come in and, and donate their time and uh, their experience, you know, that means a lot in, in being able to, to help each other out that only benefits the sport. You know, it's not just uh, each racetrack, but that benefits the sport, don't you think? Absolutely, it does. Um, tracks working together is, to me, one of the most utmost important things that we can do now. Uh, when I first started with Southern three years ago, there right now there's two other tracks operating within about 70 miles of me. They barely spoke and would always wait and see who put their rules out and they'd sort of try to duplicate them so they wouldn't have a problem instead of all of them sitting down. The first thing I did was call the other two tracks. I said, let's sit down. And they were just they were just thrilled to death. And all three of us sat down, and now we run on the same rules. We kind of work schedules around. We're blessed in our area. We've got about nine classes to choose from, which we can't run that much on one night. So we can spread it around so everybody, you know, can – can survive in the business and try to make it. And, it. and I think tracks working together is just one of the greatest things you can do it, do it to help. You know, I, I, I made a trip to Texas a couple of years ago with my, my real good friend, Cody McCarver. We went down there to do a concert. He wrote a song called Let's Get Dirty, and it kind of became a dirt track anthem. And we, we rode down to Cotton Bowl Speedway down in Texas to do a concert and have a big race down there. And I got to watch the IMCA guys uh, do their inspections. I watched how they work together. And seeing all the tracks in that area postponed their night of racing so that the drivers in that area could come to Cotton Bowl for the big race. And it's, it's tracks working together like that. Just it impressed me. And I said, man, we need that in the southeast. And, yes, you know, I, I have pushed for it and pushed for it and pushed for it. And sometimes you, you feel like you're bumping your head against the wall. But um, I live right here in between three different tracks within 20 minutes from me. And within an hour's drive, there's probably five different tracks, seven tracks. And, you know, trying to get all of them to, to work together and not schedule on top of each other, uh, it's tough. Now, we did come up with a... a an agreement between all the tracks that if one track threw somebody out for fighting, all the tracks in the area would honor that, and they wouldn't let that dri that driver race until it, you know whatever time limit the the offending track, whatever track he got in a fight in. So they said, okay, you're barred for three weeks. Nobody else would let him race around there for three weeks. And that, is, that has been a big key in getting things started, getting the ball rolling. 
And I think yeah. that's one of the things that, that has helped us out. But now, Tom, I want you to hang out with me. We're going to step out and take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about that and how things are working together down there in, in Florida. So sit tight. It's the Mitch Walker Show with your host, me, Mitch Walker. They call me the doctor. And my special guest, Mr. Tom Lowry from Southern Raceway down in Milton, Florida. And you'll find us exclusively right here on the Performance Motorsports Network. When do you think of a plumber? Like most people, even if it's an emergency, you can be confident about who will arrive to help you. For quality and reliability, count on someone you can trust. Call on the plumbing services of Hague Quality Water of Maryland. Plumbing doesn't have to be an emergency. We handle all kinds of preventative maintenance, too. Hague Quality Water of Maryland is family-owned here in Annapolis since 1993. For a refreshing choice, call us at 888-84-WATER or visit us online. Here at Lewis Meineke, we're more than just your average car care center. Hey, it's Dave, your neighbor from Lewis Meineke. Whether you need an oil change, brakes, tires, or anything under the hood, we've got you covered. Take advantage of our free check engine light service as well. Yes, free. And don't forget about our free shuttle service. Never stress, we'll take care of the rest. On with life. Give us a call at Lewis Meineke, 302-827-2054. Every 30 minutes, another innocent person is killed due to a drunk driver. My best friend. My brother. My poor grandchild. My sister. My father. My husband. My mom. <laughs> my mommy. Well, I've been afraid of changing Cause I've built my life around you Stop these tragedies before they happen. Don't drink and drive. Do you love the sound of high revving motors and the smell of burning rubber? Do you want to get your car sideways right at the ragged edge of control? If you've always wanted to try drifting or learn to improve your drifting skills, Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier motorsports facility, has the expert instructors and the specialized track to teach you how to drift and the skills necessary to drift competitively. From skid pad to open sessions, Summit Point Motorsports Park has the safe and open environment that allows drifters of all skill levels new to intermediate to get sideways and smoking. With a focus on safety and the skill set necessary to drift competitively, Summit Point Motorsports Park's Drift Nirvana is just the thing for you. Call for your reservation today, 304-725-8444. Or for more information, go online, summitpoint-raceway.com, or you can email them at office at bsrinc.com. Drift Nirvana, getting you sideways the right way. If you own a gun, you have a full-time responsibility. When you aren't using it, be sure it can't get into the hands of curious children, troubled teenagers, a thief, or anyone else who might misuse it. Your family, friends, and neighbors are all counting on you. Remember, always lock it up. For more information on firearm storage safety, visit ncpc.org. This message brought to you by the National Crime Prevention Council, the Bureau of Justice Assistance, and the Ad Council. It's the Mitch Walker Show. If you're looking for a lot of happy talk and fluff, go watch NASCAR coverage on Fox TV. Now, here's the doctor, Mitch Walker. All right, welcome back. You know, as, as we went to break, Tom and I were talking about tracks working together. And, you know, for example, right here in this area, we have uh, Boyd Speedway, North Georgia Speedway, and Cleveland Speedway then. Cleveland's now closed. But for years, Boyd's ran on Friday night. North Georgia and Saturday battled for the Saturday night crowd. And as far as getting those three tracks to work together, wasn't going to happen. You could get two of them, but you couldn't get all three of them in the same room at the same time, no matter what you've done. Well, a couple of years ago, they come up with this agreement from tracks all over this area, not just right here, but as far up as uh, Bulls Gap and uh, Volunteer Speedway up in that area, all the way over into Alabama, down south of here and over Tri-County, over in Brasstown, North Carolina. Uh, they all agreed to honor a suspension for fighting. And that was like, 
I guess you could say that was the the straw that broke the camel's back. That got tracks started talking. And once they got started talking, uh, this year Boyd's in North Georgia has worked together on getting their rule books pretty close. Um, they've agreed to race every other weekend. Uh, Boyd's one weekend, North Georgia the next weekend. If one track has a big event scheduled, the other track is going to push their crowd to that other track. Uh, they're working together to benefit the sport, and I think that's probably one of the greatest things that I've seen in this area happen. Now, do you, you say you've got a lot of that going on down there in your area? We do. We have, uh, we have, like I said, we have three tracks that work together. It's me, Flowington Speedway, and Northwest Florida Speedway. We sit down and we agreed to all, we're all on the same rules, 100%. And we also agreed with the problem, there's a problem with one driver, one, you know, one track that's suspended from all tracks. And we sit down and we came up with, and we have a little Facebook board, it's called Six Shooter Series. And each track gets two races. And we pick out our premier divisions that bring the, you know, best car counts and we collect I think the entries in varies from thirty to forty dollars, and that's put in the points fund. And last year, it was just six races. We pay out the top six drivers. The winner got eighteen hundred dollars in one division, twelve in another one. And the drivers love it, and the car counts are awesome. The fans come for it, and all because we work together. And you know, I still run thirty races, and I still am able to take two weeks off. You know to you know, four weeks off, you know, to during the year to make this series possible. And it works and it brings fans to all of us. We actually look forward to those races because some of the bigger nights we have during the year. Well, you know, I think that's one of the things that, that more tracks need to focus on is, you know, it's, it, you've got to be able as a promoter and as a racetrack, you've got to be able to look past next week. You've got to be able to look two or three years down the road. What's it going to take? to get us to the point of where we can regularly draw a really good crowd every week. What's it going to take? And tracks working together like that, uh, that helps ensure that. Yes, sir, it does. I'm going to tell you, and, and so far I've talked, and you know, we've talked about how we resolve problems, and this is just something I'm going to throw out there to talk about. i tell you what I've, I've noticed the last two years, is the weather getting hot and people getting softer down here, we struggle through the hot months getting a good crowd. It's just, uh, I don't know if people have gotten soft or what it is. And I'm not throwing out that to bash fans, but during the summer, the hot part of the summer, late July to, you know, early September, it's tough to get people to come out. Well, you know, know Tom, maybe, maybe, maybe we ought to do like churches here. used to do. Okay. Maybe we ought to do like churches used to do and hand out them little fans. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember you know those I, little wood hand, a big do. cardboard <laughs> cardboard fan had Jesus yeah. on one side and you could just fan <laughs> yes, yourself sir. to death with it. That was back before air conditioning. But I, I think I think you know, I know we see a lot of the same thing up here. We you know we get hit with that heavy humidity, and uh, I mean you sweat getting out of your car. You know, and, yep. and people have gotten so used to uh, uh, air conditioned everything. Uh, maybe, maybe it's just something that that uh, we need to take a step back in time. I know, I don't know how they do it in Florida, but last year we started selling beer at the racetrack. We have one section uh, of the grandstands that is what we call the beer garden. Uh, if you indulge you have to stay in that area uh, we hadn't had any problems with it uh, all year last year and a couple of races one race this year and it's it seems like it helps a little bit but you know race tracks are tracks are struggling trying to find ways to draw fans and uh, having to fight mother nature too that just that just adds insult to injury uh, it does, and and speaking of that, never ever track has good years and bad years. Uh, 20, 2016 is as hard to believe as uh, well, let's run a thirty race schedule. We lost one event and never got caught with fans in the stand on any event. Twenty seventeen, I lost almost thirty percent of our event, 
in almost almost 40 percent of the second half of the season due to weather and i don't know if you've seen it last last year our track was flooded with water um halfway up the front straightaway we got 22 inches of rain in like 24 hours but weather really really hurt us last year well boyd speedway sits right next to south chick creek up here at the tennessee state line and when it rains we're kind of in a low spot and uh, i've seen the entire parking lot knee deep in water uh seen the racetrack waist deep in water and you know we we battle that too um luckily i think we had two races last year that were rain outs and we had a couple that we got a sprinkle during the show but we were able to come back, get the track back and, and get the show in. So it was, uh, we have an 1130 curfew that we have to abide by at Boyd's and, uh, man, we was, we was pushing it. Cause I think we run, we dropped a checkered flag at 1129 on our last feature and it was, we was pushing it, but Hey, we made it. We have the exact same deal down here. We, it's funny. We, our drinking section is called a beer garden as well, and we have 11.30 curfew on Saturday with 11 on Friday. But I do have a 30-minute grace period in case I need it, but they don't encourage me to use it very often. But uh, well, this sort of urban sprawl has kind of you know encroached on us a little bit is what's happened. And yeah. everybody that comes down that road, and there's, there's a lot of people that live past the racetrack, I know they had to pass that speedway when they come in and bought a home. And it's a lot of these new, more expensive homes I think the complaints are coming from. Well, you know, it's funny you mentioned that. We had somebody at Boyd's uh, my first year up there as an announcer. That was two years ago, uh, two and a half years ago. There was a guy got on Facebook's, uh, Boyd Speedway's Facebook page and started bitching about the noise. And Boyd's has, has a muffler rule. Um uh, they have a curfew and the guy was just bitching about the noise. And I said, well, I said, I'll tell you what I said, I, I don't speak for the track. I'm just an employee. I said, but I'll tell you what I'll do. I said, next Saturday night, next Saturday afternoon, you meet me at the gate at five o'clock. I personally will pay your way in. I will buy your dinner, and you can come sit in the air conditioning with me in the announcer's booth. Come watch a race. And you know what his response was? He deleted his comments. <laughs> and I'm, oh, like, that's it. I'm thinking, you know, man, I... I just I just want to testify to the guy, you know. Let let him come down there and check out the racetrack, see what it's all about, and and maybe maybe attract a new fan. And you know, I figured that I could probably sweet talk the track into into letting him in for free. But if not, I was willing to pay his way in, and and get him out there just so we could we could have a new fan. But uh, he just deleted his comments and never heard another word from him. So I don't. I guess he's doing something else on Saturday night, but he ain't bitching about the noise at Boyd Speedway. <laughs> it's uh, I, I don't understand it. And, I, and the commissioners, of course, they 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 say they support the racetrack, and they won't tell me who's complaining. You know, because I'm I'm you know much like you. Every neighbor that touches our property, uh, they're they're invited at any time to come, and I know all of them by first name. You know, and, yeah. and I've got no problem with anybody touching the property. It's the people yeah. outside of the area, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, it's it's a it's it, it's it's a it's an interesting thing, and and I agree with what you said. I think I think at one time in their life, every every racer, if nothing else, just come work the racetrack one night. Come work as an official, or come sit in the tower and work in scoring. Or is in race control. Sit up there and and try it one night, and I'll bet you it changes your whole prospect and outlook on on how things are done. 
I have did the exact same with at least 20 drivers. If they, if they're there one night and they're not racing, I see them. I grab them. I take them up to the tower. I said, sit up here. Please stay for at least one feature, if not two. You don't see what goes on. And and the drivers, almost every one of them I've done that with, I have not seen negative comments, complaints. You know, most of the time when they come talk to you, they actually see what goes on behind the scene. Yeah. It's not... You know, especially when you're sitting in that tower and there's 18 cars on the track, you know, they begin to realize that, you know, you're just, you know, you're, you know, it's tough to see everything that goes on. Oh, it is. And, you know, and there's blind spots on the track. It's, you know, a seasoned driver knows if you can get them to the outside of somebody over in three and coming out of two, the track can't tell what's going on, you know. Yeah. And, and anyway, you know, it's, it's hard to see everything. But most of them, when they come and they do that, they they get a whole new perspective on it. And I, you know, I, I think I've that's also, a great idea. And you know, we had uh, complaints about the way the scoring was done and the timing, and everybody thought this was happening and that was happening. So now we will bring somebody that's in the late model ranks, car uh, car owner, somebody up to the tower during time trials to show them what's going on up in the tower. There's nobody sitting there manipulating times. Yeah. You know, and a lot of drivers thought, you know, we was letting favorites get better times. You, you heard all these things before. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah. But the after doing that for a little while, it's gone away. You don't hear it anymore. You know, so there's things to do to help quell things. And Well, you know, I always thought, uh, you know, if you eliminate everything that a racer is going to bitch about, we'll have a good time. And one of the things was always scoring and how everything was done. Well, we switched to a, a transponder system and everything is scored by the computer. And it's like, okay, now how are you going to bitch about that? And now it's not, they're not bitching about scoring no more. They're bitching about condition of the track or didn't put enough water on it. I said, man, some of you guys would bitch if you was hung with a new rope, you know? <laughs> But I, have you, it's have you ever, it's have fun, you ever had you know? the privilege to be in a bit? Have you ever had the privilege to be in a tower when Pete Walden, his daughter scores the sprint cars? Yeah, yeah, we had That's them up there last year. You know, they come to our track, and I said we got transponders. They're like, well, yeah, okay, we'll ask the guys if they want them. I said, y'all don't transponder score, no. But they like to see on race monitor what their speed is. Yeah, and then when they come up there, she sit down right by herself with a pencil to score twenty seven car field of sprint cars, and I'm secretly in my mind saying, "Oh my gosh, what's fixing to happen here?" Yeah. That was truly amazing to watch her work. That's that yeah. takes talent to sit and write those numbers. She never missed a beat. She was dead on time with the transponders, and that truly amazed me. I, I owe her an apology just for my thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Pete, that, Pete's that, been, Pete's a Pete's a case now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It, you know, his wife, she race directed a race as well as I've ever seen any man do it. And they, they, they really, you know, and I'll be honest, first time I've, I've dealt with Pete, you know, the ASCS has, has uh, faded out for this part of the country. And, you know, US, it's USCS now, and I think he'll, he'll bring some good shows. So it was my first time dealing with Pete, and i tell you what, he, his family does a remarkable job. Yes, sir, they sure do. Well, Tom, we're up against the break. I'm going to have to let you go. But, man, tell us what you got going on coming up real quick down there at Southern Raceway. A uh, week from Saturday, March 10th, we've got the USAC Midgets, a uh, late model show, uh, Slingshots are coming in a national tour. A lot of guys coming from Pennsylvania come down, and we got a big mini sprint show. The following week after that, we've got a big three day show with the Southern All Stars, Super Late Models. There's 4,000 to win on Friday, 5,000 on Saturday. Looking for a great big crowd turnout on that. A lot of local divisions in action that weekend as well. Six classes in addition to the Super Late Models. And we look forward to anybody's down here. And Mitch, I don't. I, We've we've got our way through this so far, and I'm gonna say it out here on the air. I look forward to shaking your hand. I've only met you on the radio, on radio on the phone. Never got to meet you. And I hope we do soon. Hey, well, we'll work on that and see if we can't can't work something out. But uh, man, you got an open door to the show anytime. 
you got something you want to get out there, just let me know and we'll, we'll pump it up for you and let everybody know about what's going on down at uh, Southern Raceway Park down there in Milton, Florida. And thank you for coming on air tonight and I enjoy talking with you and look forward to it in, in, uh, in the future. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Tom Lowry, Southern Raceway down in Milton, Florida. If you're down there March 10th, USAC Midgets are in town. Stop by and check them out. We're going to step out and take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back. So don't go nowhere. It's the Mitch Walker Show with your host, me, Mitch Walker. They call me the doctor, and you'll find me exclusively right here on the Performance Motorsports Network. Excuse me. I know you have a 9 o'clock, so I'll keep this short. I'm the business suit in the back of your closet. You wore me nearly every day before your office went, quote, casual. I used to be the CEO of your closet. Now I'm just that one intern no one ever talks to. I always thought you'd circle back with me, get granular, keep me in the pipeline. But nada, nothing. Don't you remember the McKittrick presentation? You spilled coffee on me and I still looked amazing during the breakout talkback Q&A. So I think it's time for me to move on. I've got a great resume and I absolutely crush it in interviews, okay? Let's make this a clean break. Shift the paradigm. The only thing I ask is that you think outside the box here and do this. Take me to Goodwill, where I can really make a difference. Your donations to Goodwill create new jobs, training programs, and education assistance for people in your community. To find your nearest donation center, go to goodwill.org. Donate stuff. Create jobs. A message from Goodwill and the Ad Council. Parents, your son or daughter has had their license for a while now, but you want to make sure they're prepared for any situation they may face on the road. High school driver's ed doesn't teach them to drive defensively. They need to be prepared for any highway emergency. For less than a month's insurance, and a whole lot less, BSR instructors at Summit Point Motorsports Park in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, will teach your son or daughter how to respond instantly and positively to unexpected situations on the road. BSR's specialized accident avoidance training teaches swerve to avoid maneuvers at highway speeds, ocular driving, which focuses driving attention on ways to avoid accidents, vehicle dynamics and feedback, skid control and skid recovery, threshold braking on straights and progressive braking on curves, and off-road recovery techniques. This is stuff driver's ed simply doesn't teach. So call BSR today, 304-725-8444. Give your kid the skill set needed to drive safely and responsibly on the highway. That's 304-725-8444. When do you think of a plumber? Like most people, even if it's an emergency, you can be confident about who will arrive to help you. For quality and reliability, count on someone you can trust. Call on the plumbing services of Hague Quality Water of Maryland. Plumbing doesn't have to be an emergency. We handle all kinds of preventative maintenance, too. Hague Quality Water of Maryland is family-owned here in Annapolis since 1993. For a refreshing choice, call us at 888-84-WATER or visit us online. Here at Lewis Meineke, we're more than just your average car care center. Hey, it's Dave, your neighbor from Lewis Meineke. Whether you need an oil change, brakes, tires, or anything under the hood, we've got you covered. Take advantage of our free check engine light service as well. Yes, free. And don't forget about our free shuttle service. Never stress, we'll take care of the rest. On with life. Give us a call at Lewis Meineke, 302-827-2054. You're listening to The Mitch Walker Show. You want half-naked girls singing and sound effects? Go watch American Idol. Now, here's the doctor. All right, welcome back. And we don't get to do this very often where we go one guest to another, but I like it. We're going to rev it on up. Joining us right now, a young lady who is... um, Pretty smart on a lot of this safety stuff. We're going to pick her brain a little bit. Joining us, Jessica Coulter with Stillo and Simpson Race Products. Jessica, how you doing tonight? Doing good. How are you, Mitch? Man, I'm finding a frog hair split three ways and sanded. <laughs> <laughs> you can't take me nowhere. I can't take you nowhere. That's what my husband no. says about me all the time when we go out to dinner. <laughs> well, you know, I know that... Um, Over the years, I have been a huge proponent of safety, and I just – 
I like my buddies, you know, and when I started doing this show five years ago, um, one of the first things that I had to do was I had to announce that a racer who I had known for probably 25 years had passed away. And it was probably one of the hardest things that I had ever done up to that point. And it really got to me. I mean, sentimentally, it really got to me. And the next week, lo and behold, there was another driver had passed away. And there for about four weeks in a row, like the first four or five weeks that I'd done the show, every week it was somebody was, was getting killed, somebody was getting hurt, somebody was getting injured. And I'm like, enough. We got to start protecting our drivers. And it really got me to looking at safety from a, from a different aspect than I ever had in all my years of racing. Uh, I started looking at it from, from a whole different perspective. And in doing so, I developed a huge respect for, for anybody who, who does follow the safety protocol and takes care and, and puts the proper safety equipment in and d- goes the extra mile to make sure that they got the good stuff. And I right. know that, that you working with Simpson, you – you sell a lot of good stuff. Correct. Yeah. I've, I've also now, seen and heard of a lot of stuff too. <laughs> I, oh, I'm sure you have. You know, I know, um, I believe I'm, I may be wrong on this. You know, Dusty Rose. The name sounds familiar, but I can't say that I do. Drag racer. Mm hmm. Had a drives an old uh, nostalgia front engine dragster. Had a blower fire last year, and cooked his fire suit and his helmet, and he walked away from it. He did have some burns on his hands, but um, considering the fireball that he was in for an extended period of time, he walked away remarkably unscathed. And he laid all the credit for that to his safety gear. And, you know, having having safety gear that is the best that you can get is, is something more racers ought to look into. I mean, I know, you know, everybody races on a budget, especially your grassroots racers. And they're, they're just trying to get by. They're just trying to get by. But there comes a point in time where, where you have to you have to take that step and make that that tough decision to go ahead and spend that money and get the good stuff. Don't you? Oh, absolutely. Um, that's one thing that I applaud Simpson race products on doing is we actually offer a 90 day financing program for all of our customers. Um, because racing is expensive. I race myself, you know, a set of tires, that's $500 and you got to pay your way to get in the pits. If you got a crew chief, you know, I, 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 it's a family sport for me. So my dad, my sister, my mom, um, my husband and our, and our little daughter, you know, she's one and a half. We all go to the track together and that adds up. And then you got to think of food and drinks and, you know, racing fuel, all, all the expenses that go into it. And then on top of that, you know, head and neck restraints, fire suits, helmets, everything that you need to protect yourself, full containment seats. Um, it, it adds up and it's a big expense. And, and Simpson has realized that, you know, racing isn't getting cheaper over these years. <laughs> You know, things keep evolving and we have new technology, whether it comes to horsepower under the hood or even your safety gear. Um, and it, it all costs money. So the 90 day financing is nice. You pay half up front and then two months later, you'll pay a quarter payment. And then a month after that, you pay the remaining balance, which is just another quarter. So, you know, that head and neck restraint, that's five hundred dollars six hundred dollars depending on the model that you go with or even up to a thousand if you went with a carbon you know splitting it up over four months for payments makes it more feasible to be able to maintain safety and to not risk your life as much per se i can't say everything's a hundred percent we all know that getting into a a race car um but it, it helps you know, lift the burden so we can go out and do what we love and and keep that passion and hopefully pass it down to our little ones and keep it a family sport. You know, I think one of the things that, that I always think about this when, 
when people start talking about racing and the cost. You know, I had Rex White, the 1960 NASCAR champion, on my show last year. And a lot of times before I have a guest on my show, I'll talk to him on Saturday or Sunday and explain to him, you know, what the deal is, how the show works, and um, learn a little bit more about him. And talking to Rex on the phone, one of the things that he said to me, and I'll never forget this, he said, you know, he said, the, the money they make today, he said, I just shake my head. He said, back in 1960, he said, there were times I was leading the points and I had to sign an IOU to get into the racetrack because I didn't have the money for a pit pass. Yep. And, you know, to, to, to sit back and you look at drivers today and the money that they make, and I, I'm not knocking their money. I'm not, that's not my point, but you look at drivers today and the money that they make. And then you look back, you know, to 1960, you know, 57 years ago, the man had to sign an IOU to get in because he didn't have enough money to pay right. his pit pass. You know, th that just amazes me how far racing has come. It's come very far. And well, you know, Jessica, one of the things that one of the reasons I wanted to get you on here is something that you and I have talked about the past day or two, and that is claims that some manufacturers have made. And tell us a little bit about how, especially helmets, how they're rated. So every manufacturer that, that is in this industry, especially your, your top leaders, um, you know, some will just do a Snell rated, but some will go ahead and do an FIA. So Snell Foundation is, is more here in the U.S. FIA um, is a worldwide certification. It's more used over in, like, Europe. Uh, but they're both, you know, very well known. Um, so basically what we have to do is Snell and FIA sends out um, their specs of what the testing will be, which all your racers can go on their websites and look up um, what their rules are per se. Um, and we will have to manufacture a helmet and go through all these extensive testing of drops. Um, FIA requires like a crush test. Um, to make sure that these helmets are going to stand up and, and protect your skull in an impact. Um, so those are really the two big ones for more of your carding route type guys that don't have to have a Snell certification uh, helmet. They can run a SFI um, or like a CMR, which is like the European uh, type certification for SFI here in the U.S. But um, those are pretty much the the main one snell again is more here in the u.s but um snell and fia are not getting along imagine that just like any i guess of your competitors at the racetrack um yep. so they're going in different routes for testing and it's making it it's probably going to make it i should say um harder to have helmets duly certified because they want to say one's better than the other um, but right now, FIA is the leader in that certification is the 8860. Now, you have different, there's different levels of certification. There's like 8858, 8859, 8860, and each one of them ha denotes a, a level of testing that has been done to this helmet, and it has passed that particular level, correct? Correct. That is absolutely correct. Okay, so if, you, if you've got a, a manufacturer out there who jumps in and says, oh, well, my helmet is certified for this, this, and this, and they kind of blow it up a little bit, it can come back and bite them in the butt because they're, they're, not, they're not being 100% truthful, right? Correct. Um, and, that, and that's a nice thing, too, is, is for the racers, you know, I, I think it's very important for us um, – to, to do our research and do our homework to make sure that we have the best and we're getting what we're told we're getting. Um, Snell and FIA publish out reports and so does SFI of who is certified. So if you see a helmet posted on eBay and you've never heard of this person and 
they're saying and claiming that their helmet passes Snell and it's an SA 2015, you can go on Snell Foundation and, and look up to make sure that that helmet is in fact rated at what they're saying it's rated. But you know, I mean, I know everyone should do their due diligence. They should do their own research. And I mean, cause they are putting their head in it. Um, but you know, it gets, what gets to me is when you, when you have a, a manufacturer being untruthful in some of their claims and it, it forces drivers, racers to, go that extra mile and check on everything, it, it kind of cheapens it. You know I mean? It, to me, it yeah. makes me wonder. It's like, well, hey, if you're going to yank my chain about this, what else are you yanking my chain on? Absolutely. There was a thing last year uh, that I found through another friend of mine. There was a company, I don't remember where they were at, but they were making bogus tethers for a Hans device. And the easy way to tell was the way they were stitched. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the Hans stitching was a square with an X in it. And this company was using just an X. And so they were pretty easy to spot, but you could buy them really cheap on, on eBay or, you know, Amazon, wherever they were buying them. And I posted two pictures one of each tether and I post them on the safety equipment exchange, the page that we started here at performance motorsports network on Facebook. I posted a picture on there and I said, Hey, just letting you know, you might want to check your tethers. And I got an email from a woman in, um, Idaho. I think it was Idaho or Wyoming. And she said, when my son seen your picture, he had just bought new tethers. I made him go check them. I'm thankful that we did because he bought two of the bogus ones. She said, so I have ordered two new tethers from Hans. You know, we ordered them from the manufacturer instead of some bootlegger. She said, right. I just want to thank you for posting that picture because if it hadn't been for that, it could have meant my son's life. And Absolutely. I mean, the, the, the email was, was pretty long and, and she went into, into a lot of detail about it, but it, it just made me feel good. You know, that there, there are people out there watching for us and, yep. and, you know, making sure that, that a lot of these people aren't, aren't pulling the wool over our eyes because yeah, racers, they want to race and, you know, they want their safety equipment, but. They don't want to have to go do research on it. You know, they just want to look right. at the label and go, okay, that's good. I'm taking that one. And sometimes right. what you see is not what you get. Absolutely. I think that's where it comes at, at like my husband and I were talking um, over the, the post that, you know, we had initially talked about over the weekend with the false information about a helmet. And, you know, at the end of the day, like it, Growing up, like I've grown up in racing, I was literally three days old when my parents started taking me to the racetrack to watch my dad and my uncle and my grandpa race. So it, it's in my blood. I started racing when I was 13, 27 now. So I've, I've been doing it for a really long time. But being in racing and, and starting out so young, you know, you develop a trust with brands. And I think that's for every racer, you know, whether it's what your dad ran or it's what your buddies run in you develop a trust with that person. And I think, you know, we always want to try to save costs and stuff, but at the end of the day, that's where we have to remember that there are certain brands out there that we all know and all the racers are running, and there's a reason for that. There's a trust and a quality and an image that's been built over many years. And, you know, like Simpson Race Products, they were born in 1959. They've been in this industry for a really long time. And we have a, the best engineers that you can have, um, you know, developing and staying up on top of these products. So I think as a racer, if it's not Simpson, there is a brand that's out there that you are loyal to. And I think it's it's just best to almost deal direct and not go on eBay or Amazon and purchase these products because you don't know what you're getting. And then that causes a whole nother dilemma of trying to do research to figure out if it's accurate or it's not 
That's right. And, and, you know, a lot of times if you don't know that you just bought bogus parts or counterfeit, then that puts a bad taste in your mouth and destroys that trust that you've had with that manufacturer for all these years. So it, it does, it does make a difference. Now, um, let me see. Tell you what, we're going to, I'm going to hold this thought. We're going to step out and take a quick commercial break. And then when we come back, I've got a couple of other thoughts that I want to address, but, um, there's, there's just so much that, that I want to say that I'm kind of trying to pace myself, but, uh, tell you what, everyone sit tight. Don't go nowhere. It's the Mitch Walker show with your host, me, Mitch Walker. They call me the doctor and my special guest, Jessica Coulter from Stillo and Simpson race products. And you'll find us exclusively right here on the performance motorsports network. Okay, so, Sarah, I'm dropping you off at Emily's? Yep. And Josh, you're going to? Soccer, Dad. Soccer practice. Right. Oh, by the way, I just wanted to let you know when I pick you both up, I'll be wearing my short shorts. What? No! Yep, and my dorky dad hat, and I'm going to do my dad dance for all your friends. They'll love it! Seriously? Why? Because I like my short shorts. Of course, I could be talked out of it if you guys would just buckle up your seatbelts without giving me a hard time. It's important to get your kids to buckle up for safety, no matter what it takes. And sometimes, all it takes is your parental powers of persuasion. Okay, okay, we're buckling up. See, all buckled. Good choice. I'll just have to do my dad dance at dinner time. What, what? No! Do what you have to to make sure your kids are wearing their seatbelts, even on short drives. Never give up until they buckle up. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Visit safercar.gov slash kidsbuckleup for more information. Parents, your son or daughter has had their license for a while now, but you want to make sure they're prepared for any situation they may face on the road. High school driver's ed doesn't teach them to drive defensively. They need to be prepared for any highway emergency. For less than a month's insurance, and a whole lot less, BSR instructors at Summit Point Motorsports Park in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, will teach your son or daughter how to respond instantly and positively to unexpected situations on the road. BSR's specialized accident avoidance training teaches swerve to avoid maneuvers at highway speed, ocular driving, which focuses driving attention on ways to avoid accidents, vehicle dynamics and feedback, skid control, and skid recovery, threshold braking on straights and progressive braking on curves, and off-road recovery techniques. This is stuff driver's ed simply doesn't teach. So call BSR today, 304-725-8444. Give your kid the skill set needed to drive safely and responsibly on the highway. That's 304-725-8444. This is a test to find out if you know it all when it comes to children. Name one of the leading killers of U.S. children age 1 to 13. What's the best way to protect children in a car crash? At what age and size should a child start using a booster seat? Don't assume you know it all when it comes to car seats for your child. Go to safercar.gov slash the right seat and know for sure. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Racing is all about winning. But hey, the second place guy has family too. Now back to the Mitch Walker Show with the doctor. All right, welcome back. Now, one of the things that that Jessica and I have been talking about is helmets. And I have been very careful not to mention the name of the helmet. It's not because I think they make a bad product. That's not my point. The point of this whole thing is giving bogus information. And one of the things that, that was stated was this particular helmet manufacturer stated that it had a snail rating of such and say uh, EA 2016 talking about it was the safest helmet in the world. And after doing some research, I learned that the FIA 8860 is the toughest restriction, the toughest inspection process there is but anyway the claim this man made was and i have it right here this is uh 
well, if FIA is so important, why does everyone else in the U.S. have to have an SA 2015, a Snell rating helmet? And you explained that earlier as far as the two manufacturers, the two testing firms in a pissing contest about who is better and who does this and who does that. But either way, the ratings of, of say, the Stillo uh, are so much higher than the ratings of this helmet that yeah. it's like comparing apples and oranges, you know. But in in conversation last night after you and I had talked, I was talking with someone else, and this helmet came up, this particular brand. And the guy says, well, yeah, he said, we had those guys out at the racetrack a couple of weeks ago. And he said he was walking around telling everyone that the helmets are flame-proof and that the shield is bulletproof. And I got to thinking about that. You know, there is no such thing as flame-proof. It is flame-retardant, but it's not flame-proof. And then you get to thinking about bulletproof. Well, what kind of bullet? A BB? A pellet? You know, I mean... I can understand you wanting to say that your product is good and that you want to, to, to substantiate it and give the, the racer something co- to compare it to. And in dirt track racing, we have a lot of foreign objects that come flying up off the racetrack and asphalt too, but you'll have debris hitting your helmet. And hitting the shield, I have had a piece of mud come all the way through my face shield. And that didn't feel good. But to, to, to make the claim that a face shield, which is less than an eighth of an inch thick, is bulletproof, is a crock of crap, pardon my French. And that kind oh, yeah. that kind of that kind of, of misleading statements really makes me question the integrity of the company that's selling the product. I'm right there with you. A hundred percent. Um, I actually, I was driving home from a Smith crate late model dirt race at Ocala, uh, down in Florida. My husband was driving and another dirt racer had sent me the post and said, Hey, just want you to know these, you know, claims are out there. And, and I addressed it and, and, you know, I don't always post like who I work for or anything like that. Um, but an 8860 that is the strongest helmet that you could possibly get. And it's also going to be, you know, more expensive because of the higher certifications. And it, they usually take more material, um, which is why our Steel of Zero is, is the, I, I can't say the best. I like to think it's the best, but, you know, there's the, all your competitors are going to say that. But, um, you know, it's, it's so light. And when you start weighing our zero as an 8860 compared to other 8860s, it blows them out of the, the water. Um, and weight's a big deal in impacts. And, you know, your dirt racers are not going to spend $4,000, $5,000 on a helmet. And that's not necessarily what they need. Um, you know, in dirt, 8860 would be more... Uh, would be more beneficial, especially with things getting thrown at you, all the rocks and mud. I've seen the chips out of my husband's Simpson helmet, which you'll get in any helmet that you could get um, on the market. But it's, you know, an 8860, it's just going to withstand better impacts. And uh, I think I don't have my notes. I was talking to my helmet engineer on some of the terminology that they use in these tests. But, you know, it's, it just goes through a higher rate of speed. It's a further drop. There's a crush test with it. It's it's the Mac Daddy that you could possibly get. Um, but most of our racers here in the U.S. use the Snell rated. Now, here's the kicker, and this is what I thought was kind of funny with this post, is because the guy deleted it. But, um, you know, FIA 8860, you have to pass a Snell 2015 certification before you can even enter FIA to get approved for an FIA 8860. So I think that says a lot right there between the two certifications and how prestige that 8860 sticker is. 
Well, you know, the thing that gets me, and and I, I've spent quite a bit of time today looking at this product, and I'm not going to say that they don't make a good helmet. I'm not saying that. My thing is they cheapen their product with cheap talk. And the way they approach it, if you can't be professional in, in talking with someone, you know, if you're, if you're selling something, you have to treat each and every person you talk to like your, your best prospective customer. And if you can't shoot them straight and tell them, Hey, here's, here's the numbers. This is what we do. I'm not going to knock another product, but this is what we do. This is what we offer. We hope you will buy our product. If you can't take that approach in dealing with, with a prospective customer, then you lose integrity to me. And right. I don't care if you, if you made the cat daddy of all helmets. It'd be a cold day in hell before I'm going to buy one from you. Just because of the principles behind it, the integrity that you lack in dealing with someone. And that's the part that, that wound my clock because – I just happened to cut and paste that whole conversation myself. And, you know, you said, I sat here and read over it and over it and over it and over it today. And it's like, you know, really? And then you watch some of the videos that they have on YouTube and they make some pretty outrageous claims on there too. And sooner or later, that's going to come back to bite them in the butt. Yeah. You're better off just, singing your praises and letting it go don't you know it just it don't do no good to to belittle your competitors because the name of the game is safety and if if someone wants to wear a simpson fire suit and a, and a bell helmet hey more power to them if they're wearing the right stuff you know right. i don't care if you mix brands i mean you don't have to have a, a Simpson helmet to match your Simpson fire suit. As long as you're, you're protecting yourself and you're taking that extra step to have the best that you can have. That's the name of yep. the game. And that's, that's what I want us. I want more drivers to be focused on. Yeah. And well, and, and I think it's important too, to remember that, you know, like this, this helmet that, you know, posted, they were an FI8860. They weren't, like you said, they weren't comparing apples to oranges. But when you go buy your fire suit and your rule book says you need an SF55, get an SF55. It doesn't matter if it's Simpson, G Force, Race Quip, you know, as long as they have that certification, that, that means something. They all went through the same testing that Simpson did. Yep. Now, that's where, the, you know, the, Great. We're looking at safety, so we all have that. Then you can get into your quality and your price points. And, a, you know, you can talk to another competitor of Simpson and say, well, this is what they say about their suit, why it's better. And then we explain why we think ours is better. Everybody's going to have their own pitch per se. But at the end of the day, they have to have that certification. That would, you know, it's like somebody trying to make a claim that an SFI one suit is safer than an SFI five, which is completely false. Um, so it just, it's always to pay attention to those certifications, make sure you're within your rule books and you're, and you're being safety conscious and you know who you're buying from and, and what you're getting. Um, I can tell you that there are some suit manufacturers that are out there that are on kind of the lower end. They're not your, your big leaders in the safety industry. And there's a little fine print in there when they're talking about the description of the suit and the material it won't say that it's fire retardant. It'll say it's treated. Yeah. Now, back in the day, they used to run like proband material or it was treated fire retardant material and it washes out after so many times. So yep. if you can get a suit for a hundred bucks, but it's only treated, you're not going to get many uses out of it and you're going to have to get it retreated or keep buying more suits. So I kind of, you know, warn people about that. Like, that's where your price difference is. You got to look at, is it treated? Is it not? You know, what kind of quality and where it's made kind of deal. That's, you know, that's totally separate from the certification, but that's also an important aspect when it comes to buying your safety gear. 
you know that that's that's the key thing that that you mentioned right there you know it's like make sure that what you're getting is what you're paying for is what you're getting you know if if you're paying for a uh a, a number 1 you're going to get a number one. If you're paying for a number five, you're going to get a number five. Don't pay for a five and get a one. Right. You know, it's make sure that you understand what you're buying. And, and you know, if you have to read that fine print, well, you know, when you get down there in the lower end of the price category, sometimes it's, it, it's, it's good to read that fine print because I do remember the old treated fire suits. Uh, back in the day, I know that's telling how old I am, but um, I do remember them. They stunk to high heaven, and mm-hmm. they made you itch, and they were the most uncomfortable thing that you ever put on your body. And the ones that they have nowadays, um, they're sweet. I mean, there's there's no comparison. You know, it's just yeah. you get what you pay for. Yep. I mean, I feel I feel like that applies to really anything, you know, your street car, that kind of stuff, or, or even, you know, performance based wise and racing, you get what you pay for. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, it even applies to garage doors. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it just happens. I fix those all day long. So, but yeah, it, it, it just, you, you have to be able to evaluate what you're doing, you know, and, and. The main the main reason I brought Jessica on tonight was was so that we could let everybody know that be careful of what you hear because what you hear and what you see may be two totally different things. And you know, when you've got somebody walking around carrying a helmet and they're telling you that it's flame proof and that the shield is bulletproof, you might want to question that just a little bit. Flame retardant, maybe. Um, uh, impact resistant, I can deal with that, but don't tell me it's bulletproof. Cause I'm going to go out and shoot it. <laughs> and if it don't stop at 38, I'm going to call you a liar. Maybe that's but, what we should do as a YouTube video. <laughs> that's what we really should, you know, but for the price they want for this helmet, I don't believe that's going to be happening anytime soon. Yeah, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> just, just a quick question. What does the zero weigh? Um, so I have gotten really comfortable with the numbers of stripping it down to a bare shell for a lot of our NASCAR drivers. Um, and a bare shell is 1.5 pounds, which is nothing compared to composites. I can tell you a Stilo composite shell bare is, I want to say it was 2.2 pounds, 2.12 in that range. Um, so I, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a quick breakdown real quick. I had a customer come into our Simpson store in North Carolina in Mooresville, and they were looking at a Stilo composite in our Simpson Carbon Devil Ray. Now, the Stilo composite one he was looking at was our GT model, so it had ports on the side, which in general, it's more material, so it's going to weigh a little bit more. They're usually 0. 0.1, 0. 0.2 pounds heavier than the Stilo FN naked composite. So anyways, we we're conscious about weight. He had a neck injury previous years ago when he was racing. So he's always, you know, looked at carbon helmets. Well, when we weighed him out, the Stilo only ended up being the composite now to a Devil Ray carbon fiber helmet. It was only 0.2 pounds heavier. And he ended up going with the Stilo because he didn't have to switch out the helmet electronics inside. He could just swap uh-huh. out an adapter. So, but that's, I mean, that kind of tells you right there what sets the bar between different brands. Even though it's Simpson, I'm not knocking Simpson, I'm not knocking any, you know, any helmet brand for that matter. It's just, you know, there's a little bit of things that they can do here and there between the cheek pads and shields and bolts and, you know, everything adds up to where it ends up being pounds for these drivers. So... Oh, That's yes, it does. Well, Jessica, we're up week. against the commercial break. I'm going to have to let you go. Tell everybody how they can get a hold of you if they want to buy a new helmet. 
uh, Call Simpson Race Products in Mooresville, North Carolina. Um, they're at Stilo 704-662-3366, and my extension is 213. Well, there you go. If you need a helmet, look her up. She'll fix you up. She's not just a helmet salesman. She's a racer, too. Jessica, thanks so much for coming on. you got an open door to the show anytime. Thank you. Have a good night, Mitch. All right. Jessica Coulter, who just happens to be married to Joey Coulter. And uh, heck of a wheel girl. She can handle one. And I will go ahead and say this. The helmet that we've been talking about is champion. So... Look it up, check it out, and see what you got. All right, sit tight, everyone. We're going to jump out and take a quick commercial break. When we come back, it's going to be history lesson time. So don't go nowhere. It's the Mitch Walker Show with your host, me, Mitch Walker. They call me the doctor, and you'll find me exclusively right here on the Performance Motorsports Network. You own a performance car, and you know how to drive, but you want to learn real performance driving. Well, Bunky, get that car off the street and onto the track. Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier road racing facility, located just over an hour from D.C. in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, is the place to go. And you'll find that Friday at the track is going to give you what you need. For less than a monthly car payment, you can attend this regularly scheduled one-day instructional event in your street car on one of Summit Point's three world-class road racing circuits. You'll receive classroom instruction, skid pad instruction in their cars, including front and rear skid control, and four 20-minute in-your-car instructional sessions from a professional instructor. Have fun, go fast, and really learn how to drive. Call 304-725-8444 for class schedules and details. That's 304-725-8444, Friday at the track at Summit Point Motorsports Park. Every 30 minutes, another innocent person is killed due to a drunk driver. My best friend. My brother. My poor grandchild. My sister. My father. My husband. My mom. (laughs) My mommy. Stop these tragedies before they happen. Don't drink and drive. The Performance Motorsports Network is a compilation of shows about motorsports. From technical to controversial to just fun, everything you like about racing and gearhead stuff is right here on one internet channel. The Performance Motorsports Network. Tell your friends about it. Hi, I'm Reed Sorensen. Racing has been a part of me and my family for as long as I can remember. I had to make tough choices early on to get to the top. It took hard work and dedication, but it's those tough choices that helped me prepare for challenges I would face as a cup driver. Make the right choices today and be ready for the challenges tomorrow. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. Covering the entire field, from the back markers to the race winner, every weekend, it's the Mitch Walker Show. And now, back to the doctor. All right, a lot of you know I am passionate about history. I'm passionate about the history of racing. Not just NASCAR, but all forms of racing. But the young man that I'm going to be talking about right now, I can honestly say, if it hadn't been for this man, NASCAR wouldn't be here today. I'm talking about Raymond Parks. Born June 5th, 1914. He passed away June 20th, 2010, at the age of 96. Born and raised in Dawsonville, Georgia. This was his obituary, and I'm going to read it. Raymond Parks, owner of NASCAR's first championship-winning car and an integral part of the series formation, has died. He was 96. NASCAR said Parks passed away at his home Sunday morning in Atlanta. Parks, who was confined to a wheelchair, attended a reception May 20th for the induction of the inaugural Hall of Fame class and was warmly, warmly received throughout the industry that evening. 
It was good for the industry and so many current fans to see this man in person, said NASCAR President Mike Helton at the Infineon Raceway, site of Sunday's race. Helton called Parks the heart and soul, or the spirit, that got NASCAR started. Parks was the last living member of the group of men who created NASCAR in 1947 during a meeting at the Streamline Hotel in Daytona Beach. He fielded a car that Red Byron drove to the inaugural Cup Series Championship in 1949, NASCAR's first season of competition. Raymond was instrumental in the creation of NASCAR as a participant in the historic... Me- oh, born in Dawsonville, Georgia, 1914, Parks left home when he was 14 years old and began running moonshine, which earned him a nine-month stint in the federal penitentiary in Chillicothe, Ohio from 1936 to 1937 on conspiracy charges. Parker, Parks later became a legitimate businessman and fought in the Battle of the Bulge during World War II as part of the 99th Infantry Division. His business success was built through real estate ventures, vending machines, gas stations, and convenience stores. Some of his properties were later sold to Georgia Tech. Parks at times fielded cars for Fonnie Flock, Curtis Turner, before eventually pulling out of the sport. The Hall of Fame, which opened last month, received features several of Parks' donated trophies. I'm proud of my involvement in NASCAR over the years, and with the opportunity to partner with the NASCAR Hall of Fame, Parks said in a statement when he donated his collection last year. Parks was not among the inaugural five members inducted into the Hall of Fame last month. It would have been really nice if he would have lived until he had gone into the Hall of Fame, said team owner Rick Hendricks. His contribution to this sport was so, so great that it would have been really cool for that to have happened. And that was from 2010, featuring Raymond Parks. Now, you know, some of his accomplishments, uh, it's just cars driven by, by some of the legends in the sport. They called him the godfather of stock car racing. NASCAR has tried to clean up its image over the years and say that moonshine had nothing to do with it. They try to downplay that. Anybody who knows the sport knows that moonshine is what got NASCAR started. If not through the drivers, through the man that Big Bill France went to, to get money, Raymond Parks. Raymond Parks financed so many of the ventures that put NASCAR on the map. When you look back and you see pictures of Mr. Parks, He was always dressed to the nines, kind of a dapper Dan, and all his cars were always immaculate. Image was a big thing to him, both in his personal life and in his race cars. Parks once said, racing was a lot different back then. It was really just getting started. I guess Lakewood Speedway was the first real track that we raced on. There were dozens of other tracks that would spring up in a pasture or on farms. And some with just fences that separated the fans from the, from the racing. Sunday afternoon was a time that most people relaxed. It was normal for those who had fast Fords or other type of moonshine cars to want to get together. They might decide to go out on a highway outside of town, see who the fastest cars Other times, I would find some farmer that would let him go out in his pasture. Maybe it was just one or two cars. Usually it was several. And when the cars revved up, the local people always showed up. Parks won his first race in 1938 at Lakewood with Lloyd Say driving a 1934 Ford. World War II shut down Raymond Parks' operations. After serving in Europe with the 99th Infantry, he was discharged in 1946. Then he came back to racing. 
Because of his successful business, Parks and Novelty Company, that included slot machines, jukeboxes, pool tables, cigarette vending machines, Parks was able to fund his racing ventures better than anyone else at the time. Red Voigt was one of the best mechanics I've ever known, Parks said. He did all the work, and whenever he thought we, were, we needed anything else, the money was always there. It was the money. That's what it was, said Parks. I loved racing, but I had to make a living. My business was doing well, but I was splitting purses with the drivers and paying all the expenses, including parts, and my money was coming up shorter each week. So in 1951, he called it quits. But when you look back and you see the influence that this man had on so many people, so many teams, it's amazing that NASCAR is where it is today because of the moonshine money that Raymond Parks pumped into the sport. Racers like him are gone. We don't have those anymore. We don't have racers who are like Raymond Parks. And that's a shame. But you know, we still have people who are passionate about the sport. We still have people who get out there and put their blood, sweat, and tears into everything they can to give racers a place to race. You take people like Tom Lowry, who we just talked to, LeVon Sparks, Kenny Slayton. You look back and you see all these people who, who give and give and give and give. And they don't ask for anything in return. They just love the sport. You know, if you go to Boyd's and you talk to anybody up there, Kathy Coulter is the promoter. This year, she's the boss. But the man behind the scenes is Kenny Slayton. He puts in more work up there than any two people up there. And it's people like him who make this sport what it is. Go to East Alabama Motor Speedway. Yeah, the Thomas family runs it. Thomas family owns it. But they're blessed to have somebody like LeVon Sparks down there who just loves the sport. He's not in it to make money. He's not in it to make a killing. He just loves the sport. That's what we need. We need more people like that today. And if we can find more people like that today and turn them loose in racing, we're going to have a boon of success coming in the next five years. While NASCAR may be on a somewhat downward spiral, if you don't believe it, look at their TV ratings. Lowest rated Daytona 500 in, I think, 12 years. Nobody's looking at that. People are going back to grassroots racing. I mean, even the Lucas Oil and the World of Outlaw guys, yeah, they have success. But you look at the money involved in those teams, they're slowly pricing themselves out of racing. Slowly, bit by bit, you're watching drivers retire. Because they can't afford it anymore. But at your local level, at your local racetrack, wherever it may be, go down there on a Friday or Saturday night. Watch those guys bring those cars out that they've worked on all winter long and get out there and put on the best show that they possibly can for you, the fans. Those are the people that we need to be patting on the back. 
those are the people that we need to be supporting because those are the ones that are keeping racing alive. Just like Raymond Parks did in the early years. That's your history lesson. Thanks to everyone over at Garhoffa. That's Georgia Auto Racing Hall of Fame Association for the information and the idea for the segment. I appreciate all the guys over at Garhoffa. And don't forget, when you go get your new Georgia license plate, make sure you tell them you want a Garhoffa tag. And if you're interested in joining, you can get Pioneer Pages each and every quarter. You'll be seeing some articles from me and some upcoming issues. So uh, look out for them. Reach out to me. I'll put you in touch with the people who you need to talk to. Or you can head on over to garhoffa.org .org, and join up yourself. Don't forget, Ultimate Super Late Models rolls into North Georgia Speedway this weekend. Open practice on Friday night. Racing on Saturday. We have got March 23rd coming up here in just about a month. Three weeks, I think it is, three and a half weeks. It will be the Lucas Oil Super Late Models roll into Boyd Speedway. And that will kick us off with a full month of April racing. But seasons are getting ready to start up. Um, if you're down around Milton, Florida, don't forget, stop by Southern Raceway. Coming up next weekend, March the 10th, it is a USAC. They roll into town for a big show down there. Check out their Facebook page. Check out their website. And make sure you tell them that the doctor sent you. Let them know that you heard about them here on Performance Motorsports Network. Well, that's going to about do it for us. Don't forget, we've got some great shows coming up in the next couple of weeks. Got some great guests. Uh, looking forward to bringing those guests to you each and every week. Always looking for more guests, too. So if you got somebody you would like to hear on the show, shoot me a message. Let me know. We love to give the little guy a little bit of exposure and let him share his story with all the listeners out there. But uh, just want to remind you, make sure that you keep Larry Kaler in your prayers, um, suffering from terminal cancer. Great guy, great friend, good friend of the show. Wish there was something we could do. Cancer sucks. I wish cancer would get cancer and die. Let's do a black flag. Hashtag black flag for cancer. I think it's something that would make Larry proud. So if you get a chance and you do a tweet, look me up, the doctor 309 That's my handle on Twitter. If you're not a friend, shoot me a friend's request on Facebook. Follow us. We'll keep you up to date on all the things going on around the world of racing. Don't matter where it's at, whether it's in Arkansas, California, Texas, Louisiana, Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina. It don't matter. We'll keep you up to date on it. And we'll tell you next week about the movie Shifting Gears. So tune in next week. Same time, same place. It's been fun. We're going to step out of here. Everyone have a safe week. And remember two things. Take somebody racing with you this weekend. And remember this. You can't change the whole world. But you can touch just one life. My name is Mitch Walker. They call me the doctor. And you have been listening to the Mitch Walker Show. And you'll find us each Monday night right here exclusively on the Performance Motorsports Network. See ya. 
You've been listening to The Mitch Walker Show on the Performance Motorsports Network. Stay tuned to Performance Motorsports Network for more race talk. For the latest motorsports news, visit racechaseronline.com. The Mitch Walker Show is a copyrighted production of the Performance Motorsports Network. www.performancemotorsportsnetwork.com A member of the Scorpion Radio Group Incorporated and may not be rebroadcast, replicated, or saved in any media without the explicit written permission of PMN. Check out our Facebook page or our section on the PMN website. The opinions expressed on this program are those of the host, co-host, and guests, and do not necessarily reflect those of the management and the ownership of either the Performance Motorsports Network or Scorpion Radio Group Incorporated. The advertisers are marketing partners. Be listening again next week when the Mitch Walker Show returns on Monday night at 9.30 Eastern. Until then, stay tuned for more great motorsports programming on the Performance Motorsports Network.